Hello Power App Makers, this is Ahmed Saleh again with you today. I have this short quick video to talk about the multi-choice columns in SQL. Uh, obviously in SQL we don't have multi-choice columns like what we have in Dataverse and what we have in SharePoint. Uh, but usually when we are saving multiple values in, in a column, uh, we use uh, comma or semicolon uh, delimiter or separated text values uh, to represent these multiple values that we save in that column. So if we have a canvas app and we would like to filter through these values, so basically we have a combo box and in that combo box we will select a value and then we would like to go through all the records and see what field has this selected value from that combo box. So what if we have multiple values selected in that combo box, we would like to see that if both these selected values wherever they are found in these records in the SQL table, then we would also like to filter them out. This is something that we actually have in SharePoint uh, when you use a choice column by default. And this is uh, one of these exciting things out of the box uh, components uh, about uh, using Dataverse. Uh, as we said, it's way more than just a database. Uh, so using these choice columns, you can do this easily without any problem, actually very, very minimum code. Uh, you have to write in Power FX. Today, I'm going to show you uh, how it's look like in Dataverse and then uh, how we can do this when we are using actually SQL table. This is my blog post here. So uh, I have all the instructions and I have also the code and everything that is being done to do that. Now, let's hop in and see how the Dataverse choice column uh, can be filtered. Uh, and then compare that to the SQL. So as you can see, I have this uh, uh, app right here. So I'm going to go to my screen number two, and this is a screen where I have actually my uh, Dataverse table. As you can see here, I have the Dataverse choice column. This is a Dataverse table. And here I have this uh, gallery. And then in this gallery, I have basically, you know, uh, to filter through this Dataverse table. And then I'm using this formula basically based on the combo box selected items. And this is our combo box right here. And based on the selected item, uh, if it's blank, show me everything. If it's empty, show me everything. And then we are using basically class name, which is the column name of uh, the choice, basically the choice column, right? And, uh, and then uh, the column name or uh, basically the value in this column, uh, it exists in the combo box that selected item. That's it. That's everything that you, you need to do when you work through uh, filtering a multi-choice. And this is, again, this is not just a choice column. This is actually a multi-choice column. And again, remember the multi-choice column, uh, it's, it's one thing that when we have a column right here, so uh, let me actually go to this column real quick, and I will come here, filter just to get that column. And this column called class name, it's right here and I see it's a choice type but again if I go and edit you can see that it's actually I have enabled selecting multiple choice uh, choices is allowed so that's that's a multi-choice column not just a choice column right so now going back to my app here as you can see this is what we are using the class name and we are searching the value of that column into uh, the combo box that selected item and this is it. That's basically it. So let's actually see it running. So for example, here I have this, as I said, the gallery, this is the, all, all the items and I want to filter them out. So what I will do, I will go ahead and select A and that's it. So now I have two records. Both these records has the A value. So what if I want actually also uh, in this case, like to select B, let's say, for example, right? So uh, in this example, I have uh, and these are cl class name. Let's just call them class names. So I have class A and B. So I want all the students that are in class A and B. So Ahmed is actually in class A. Mike is in class A and B. Sorry, class B and Hanin is class B. So both options are there. So let's select C. So that's meaning it will get me everyone in class A, B, and C. Let's actually select only C. So Mike and Sarah, both of them are the only students in class C. Let's select B. So we have Mike, Sarah, and Hanin, and these three students are in class B. Again, as you, as you have seen, it's just basically using the filter function and searching in the combo box that selected item. And this combo box, it actually has the choice, 
choices of my choice column. This is the choice object that we have created right here. Uh, let's go back to this one. So again, we have a choices here. So this is the choices that I created. And this choice, as you can see, it has these classes A, B, and C, and we can select one or more of these choices. Uh, going back to our app. Now, let's see what we have done in SQL, right? So I have actually this screen right here. Uh, let me actually zoom in a little bit. And as you can see, I have a gallery. This gallery has a collection, and I will show you where to create this collection. And then I have another gallery to show me actually the filtered result. This, this collection here is going to be generated by on select property of this button right here. So when I press on select on this button, I actually generate this table right here. And again, it's just, I'm not connecting here to SQL, but this is basically the data example that will come from SQL. You have a student name column and you have a class name. Uh, so, and again, they are saving just a text. This text is separated by a comma, right? And it could be a semicolon, doesn't matter, right? So we have a student name uh, and their classes, Mike, you know, we have Emily, we have Sally, we have Jake, we have Miriam in three classes, Hamza. And again, it doesn't matter the order at all. So you can have it CBA, EBC, BA, AB, it doesn't matter. So this is basically some kind of sample, like it's a coming from SQL. Again, two columns, one is student name, and the other one is comma separated text to represent the selected classes, right? So now let's go back uh, to uh, the other part, which is actually using the combo box. So in this combo box right here, I have the on, uh, so I have the items property. It's basically just static class names. So I, I have to go to the items right here. And as you can see, it's just A, B, and C. So these are the options that we have now, so they can select anything. Where I have the code is basically on the onChange property of our combo box, as you can see right here. So first of all, I'm actually creating here a collection. So clear collection, I call this collection is filtered table, right? And again, we are basically using this collection that uh, when, when, when we have, uh, you know, uh, to go through the selected item, uh, selected items in that combo box that we have. So here we're using the for all. So for all combo box that selected items as options. So basically, uh, uh, I'm going to loop through the selected items. So if I have one selected item, then I will loop one time. If I have two selected items, this loop will run time. If we have three, it will run three times, so on and so forth. Right. And every time it will loop. So it will do that. I will actually use the collect function to basically collect a record. So that record, I'm gonna collect that record using the search function. So the search function is basically calling, taking the collect table. Again, the collection table is basically the collection that we built that has all the students. This is basically going to be the table that has come in from your SQL. And then what I'm doing is actually I'm searching. Uh, so the search obviously function, it's actually taking the source. It's gonna be in my collection, all the students that we have, their names and their classes. Then we have the text. So what text that we are using to search? In this case, gonna be text is gonna be what? It's gonna be the selected item. Remember, we have multiple selected item from that combo box. So uh, it will go through the first selected item, then that's the value, right? If I select A, so and B. So the first iteration in this for all loop is gonna be A. So that means, you know, find the text A, uh, where find it in the class name. And again, this is search, so the search will find the value you know, uh, in a text. So if there is A in that text, then we can actually take that A. That's as simple as this, right? And again, we know that the class names are separated by a comma, semicolon, wherever. So that means if it's A, B, C, right? Then if it's A there, it will actually select that record and so on and so forth. So this, uh, this for all will loop through all the selected item in that combo box and basically fill this collection for us, right? Now, after we get out from the for all loop, I'm actually creating another collection and here actually to distinct. So basically what's happening here, every time is the A exists, right? It will actually get the record and that will cause some kind of duplications, right? So basically the record it, itself, it will be selected multiple times. How is that? So let's say that we have a student that has A and B classes, right? So they have A and B. So what happened is when, when the iteration in the for all loop come to the A selected item from the combo box, right? So it will select that record. Again, the second item is B. 
right? So it will go and select also that same record has the A previously selected because that record also has a B value in the class name. So that will cause a duplication. So that means the record has been selected twice. So to do that or to clear this up, so we are using basically another collection. This collection I use click collect, get the collection name, I call it collection distinct filter. And then what I do, I use the distinct function to basically get the unique values in this collection that I have in the for all. And that's the trick. This is how we do this. So let's actually go ahead and see and we test this right now. So if I run the app right here, so I'm going to go and select one value, select A. So what, as you can see here, I selected A. So I got all the students that are registered in class A. I have Ahmed, I have Mike, I have Emily, I have Miriam, and I have Hamza, right? So those are students. So let's actually select B. So now I have class A and class B. So I want all the students in class A and class B. So I have Ahmed, Mike, I have Emily, I have Jake. Now I have Miriam and I have Noor because she is in B right here. So let's actually go and just select C as well. So that will give me obviously everyone. So let's go ahead and just select C this time. I want only students registered in class C. As you can see, it's Emily, we have Saleh, we have Miriam, and we have Hamza, and we have Noor. So this is it. This is how you do it. I know that there is similar things that we might do in SharePoint because again, SharePoint, it's very, very hard to basically filter through multi-select uh, choice column in SharePoint as well. I will try to figure out if you know it, just, uh, you know, uh, uh, share your feedback or comment onto this video. Uh, that will be great. Maybe we can discuss this and try to come up with similar way to do this. But here you go. This is basically what you can use with SQL or any other data uh, source that you are saving uh, uh, multi-choice values uh, as, a, as a comma or a delimiter separated kind of text. So you can use this uh, method right here. And again, this is also take us back to the Dataverse. See, in the Dataverse, we don't have to do all this. As you can see here in the Dataverse, we, we only just have this filter right here. And, and that's it. That's everything you need here, right? It's class because, again, in Dataverse, the choice column is linked to a choice object and it's being treated differently in the Power FX. Then the question here is Power FX uh, different when we actually use it against uh, 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 Dataverse as our data source uh, versus SQL versus SharePoint? There is slightly different stuff. Again, Dataverse is the back end of the Power Platform. It's fully supported for these uh, uh, Power Apps, Canvas Apps, obviously, and it make it a lot easier to basically communicate with these out-of-the-box components like, you know, the object or the option set that we use in these choice columns. Uh, in the description of this video, I'm, I'm going to put actually a link. In May 20th, uh, I have an online sessions for two hours. I will talk about Dataverse and Canvas Apps. So how we use, you know, the Power FX and how we can use uh, the great features uh, of, of using, uh, you know, Dataverse as your data source in the back end uh, in building a Canvas app. Uh, what is the difference between using Power Apps with Dataverse uh, versus SQL versus SharePoint? Uh, how to handle like relationships, multi-level relationships, all these kind of things. And what exactly is the out of the box? You know, uh, there is certain times in SharePoint and SQL, for example, we have uh, to use lookup functions, right? We have to use filter functions to get some values. Actually, in, 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 in Dataverse, these are, uh, uh, by default, it's actually supported. So basically, you don't have to use sometimes filters, you don't have to use lookups. You can just use dot, and it will actually give you the second level of related data. We will actually discuss this in session. I will put the link, as I said, in the description of this video. Try to register and sign up. It's limited space. Uh, so uh, we can see you and we can discuss this uh, further. I hope that you enjoy this video. If you do, please leave your feedback, like, subscribe uh, to get uh, the most up-to-date uh, videos, and I will see you uh, in the next video. Thank you.